It had taken Lauren first, though he didn't know it then. Didn't understand the dead look in her eyes. That unnatural, wooden, lurching motion as she moved about the lab. Of course it was too late when I learned to read the signs. Most of the crew were in its power already. And I'd paid a terrible price for my blindness. Was I the last? I could hear their footsteps on the snow outside my cabin. Leaden steps, moving as one. Not safe here. I'll make for the lab. Oh. Ah. Ah. Pain, throbbing from the gaping hole in my stomach. That could have gone better. Dr. Turner, open up! My eyes, swimming. I almost black out again. Come on, Jim. There's nothing to worry about. Harris. Open this fucking door, James. Or whatever it is that's living in his body now. I clenched my teeth against another wave of agony. Keep it together. First things first, gotta get this bleeding under control. Only way out, but that thing is out there, wearing Wayne Harris's face. It's showing results from my last batch of periodiolus. High concentration of necrotrophic mysomacetus here. The locker should have some useful supplies in it. The door's stuck fast. Need something to lever it. A rusty screwdriver rattled around in the toolbox. There's nothing else useful. Nothing remarkable. Collection of papers on the ancient fungi, buried deep beneath the ice, would have been the culmination of a decade of research. The better part of our lives together. I'd never finish now, but perhaps I can pass on the torch. I can't think of a use for it. It's showing results from my last batch of periodiolus. Hmm. High concentration of necrotrophic mysomacetus here. We've been shuffling around lab space. They're mostly empty at the moment. Found a small blowtorch. There's nothing else useful. There's nothing else useful. Locked. That won't work. That old girl's the only thing keeping us from a quick and icy death. The thing had just kept coming. Finally went down after I emptied my last five rounds into it. But not before it had got me in the guts. Looking at the radio, my heart sinks. A stray bullet had smashed right through it. Shit. There's nothing. The door's stuck. I leave her at the door with the screwdriver, but it's too small to be of any use. Don't want to waste. Refrigerated cabinet holds some antibiotics at a safe temperature. We keep a small supply of morphine on the base too, hence the lock. Despite the tremor in my fingers, 
I've managed to undo the screws. Radio's useless to me broken, and I can't fix it with my bare hands. Awful mess of melted wiring that needs replacing. I have my work cut out for me. This binder only contains a fraction of what Kathy and I had learned about the fossilized zygomycota. That it was still alive, that it emitted some sort of high frequency sonar when propagating. That was only the start. God, I miss her. Some old wiring, hanging low. Thinking to move the barrel closer to the wiring, I give it a push. The agony from the hole in my stomach is indescribable. Gotta fix myself up first. Found some mean looking wire cutters. Can't do it. Okay, Wilkins, what you got for me? Kneeling down over the body, I noticed the telltale, inhuman signs on his face. He was also wearing one of those armbands I'd noticed on the others. Oh God, the stench coming off him. Almost losing consciousness, again, but desperate, I persist. I find the key in his jeans pocket. This key must fit a lock around here somewhere. The lock clicks open. My eyes flit hungrily past morphine, antibiotics, bandages. Someone had been storing lab samples in here again. Strictly forbidden, but the lab fridge had been on the fritz for weeks. The sample caught my eye. Thin, scarlet membrane stretched over a pulsating, bulbous growth. Ah! I wave away the cloud of crimson spores, eyes, nostrils, throat burning. I cough, and the action triggers a dagger of pain from my wound. Still, I manage not to black out, and at least the cabinet's open. Morphine would only slow my mind, so clenching my teeth to suppress screams of agony, I injected some penicillin around the wound before bandaging it up. I shove the barrel under the wire. Can't read. Can't cut it with my bed. These armbands, what are they? Do those things use it to identify those that have turned? Reaching up to cut the wire, I feel something brush against my mind. Vast and terrible, that mere fleeting whisper of contact, a freight train roaring through my consciousness. I was drowning. From deep beneath my mind, I could feel that force animating my limbs like a monstrous puppeteer. Lungs burning, I struggled to the surface. God, was that what the others had felt? I've got to get help. Need to cut out this fused wiring first. Snipping away the fused wiring, I have a vision, collecting fusiform stem samples with my wife. Her laughter. Let's see. 
Should be working now. I grabbed the receiver. This is Dr. James Turner from Station Theta 661. Do you copy? The welcome sound of a friendly voice comes through the static. Oh, thank God. I need evac ASAP. There's been... Something horrible has happened. Yep. Tell the crew, do not land until they see... Repeat, do not land until they see Dr. Parker. Copy. Over and out. Thank God for that. Wavering on my feet, exhausted, I sink to the floor to wait. Sleep falls like a lead curtain. Snap awake. Something very wrong. The cold. My mind. My body stiff and numb. The pain like hot lead being poured over my hands. My feet. My face. I struggle to move my limbs, tearing myself away from the frozen floor. Tearing up a decade of work, I throw it in. That unbearable cold! The page is lit. I stand close until feeling returns to my face. I'll lose some fingers, but I'm alive. For now. Is that the evac chopper? out there. Time to go. I'm turning the wheel when I hear shouts and bodies slam into the other side. I throw myself at the door, but too late. Their worm-like arms twisting their way in. Oh God, don't know how long I can hold it. I almost drop the blowtorch trying to light it, but it flares to life and I hold it against the arm wielding that knife. I almost drop it, again, as the smell of burning hair and pork crackling fills my nostrils. Screams from outside, and the knife clatters on the floor. I make a lunge for the knife. Wielding the cruel hunk of steel, I shut my eyes and start hacking. The muffled screams from behind the door, the sticky warmth splashing on my arms. Finally, I feel the door slam close behind my back. It had worn the same armband. They all did once they turned. Another one of those fucking armbands. Full box of cartridges inside. There's nothing else. Weapon shaking in my hand, I swung the heavy door open. He's coming out. Jim, put it down. Look, Ben's here. No. Dad, it's me. I'm coming in. No. Mum called before. She... I just got in. No, Ben. Get out of here. Run. Dad, put the gun down. They... They killed Kathy, Ben. Dad, it was an accident. They... they told me what... Look, it wasn't your fault. Dad, what are you doing? I... can't fight it... much longer. Dad, you need help. Please. Drop the gun, Jim. It's your son, for fuck's sake. Can't think. Are you... one of them now, too? Shaking, 
every synapse in my infected mind urging me to pull the trigger. Please. I gaze at my son. He'd lost so much already. Ben. Oh God. Ben. But that wrongness is in his face. And... What's that bag on your arm? What? It's nothing. What are you doing? Drop the gun. I can't let it have him too. Not our son. <laughs> <laughs>